So if I extend that line and then I extend another line, let's see maybe this one here, okay? The intersection of these two lines will be one of the vanishing points. So this is here the real vanishing point, okay? And then I do the same thing on the left. I just follow this line and then the other line and once again the intersection of these two here that's that's the other vanishing point so vanishing point one and two and I can do the same thing to find the third one I just follow this line and then the other line and I was very close with that vanishing point so that's that's the third vanishing point and I can delete the ones that I was drawing there okay so you can tell now we see the three vanishing points and if I turn back these lines you can uh, see how we got them three-point perspective is great if you want to emphasize depth or height in this case we can tell that these buildings are really tall and we are far away from the street level we can do the opposite if we place the horizon at the bottom of the picture you can imagine that because now the horizon is somewhere here on the top okay and actually these two points should be on the same level so probably again I wasn't too ac accurate but that's the horizon line and you can imagine if we place the horizon line somewhere at the bottom of the picture then we will be on the street level and we are going to look up to the buildings so that would be a completely different perspective but again using three vanishing points and it can be even more complicated if you go above three-point perspective so if you introduce a fourth or even a fifth vanishing point then you will get something like this so for example this is a five-point perspective where our vertical lines are distorted so they are not straight they are completely distorted they are curves instead of straight lines if you see something like that you can tell that uh, the image is using more than three vanishing points okay so I don't want to get more detail into this uh, remember one point perspective two point three point these are the most important ones and most commonly used perspectives and let me show you a couple of examples first of all this image this is a photograph there is a useful option in Photoshop to straighten photographs which is quite useful now that we have where we want to find the vanishing point in this image under the eyedropper tool you can find the ruler tool and with the ruler tool you can select a line in the image which should be straight so I clicked and dragged over the image and I selected this part which should be straight and then I click on straight and here on the top this option is only in CS5 but if you use previous versions you can find the image image rotation arbitrary option as well which will also give you the same option but I'm going to use now straighten so I click on straighten and the image is straightened it's still not perfect because we have a lens distortion in the image maybe it's better if I use a vertical line so I select this line here on the left and again I straighten the image it's still not good but let's say this is what we are going to use in this case um, we can always use lens uh, correction if we want to correct these problems but in this case I'm going to just simply use this uh, version of the image and I use the custom shape that we created for the vanishing point and I guess that the vanishing point should be there somewhere in the middle so I'm drawing my vanishing point and I'm holding down alt and shift okay now if I zoom closer we can see all the lines I can reduce the opacity of this just to see the image better okay and I will try to find the placement of the vanishing point I'm moving it up and down using the up down left and right arrows and the shift as well if I want to move it faster so these are the nudge options keyboard uh, shortcuts to nudge a selected layer around they only work if you have the move tool selected 
okay I'm concentrating on these lines here on the left okay so I think the vanishing point should be a bit more to the left in this case yeah now the line starting to align with the with these lines here and also on the bottom I can tell here on the right it's close but not perfect maybe we need to move the vanishing point down a bit no probably up a bit yeah now on the right I start to see the lines properly I might need to move it a little bit to the right let me see on the top yeah so now on the top the lines are following so the original lines of the photographs are following my vanishing point also here on the right I can tell it's good and also on the left it's good so I found the vanishing point that's again somewhere straight in the middle the horizon is a bit further up but that's that's the perspective of this photograph so for example if I would like to place something on this image let's say a box now I can see the perspective and I can easily line it up to these guidelines we can do the same on other photographs but let me show you a painting a painting which I used in a previous tutorial as well and we were talking about composition so in this image again we see a one vanishing point perspective and if I use the same custom shape I guess it's somewhere here on the left so I just draw my shape I click on background then I click on the shape layer again and I reduce the opacity to something like 50% and now I'm going to start move it around okay so let me first concentrate here on the right on these lines so I'm going to move it right and left and I try to find the lines probably the horizon is more down in this case yeah now the lines are I think are following properly yeah even like here I think it's a bit more even more down yeah I think this is this is good here on the right so all the lines are following uh, the building okay so we can call these construction lines or guidelines and even here on the left we can see the windows they are following also the lines and even small details like this column here follows uh, the perspective lines so we found the vanishing point which is in this case here on the uh, digital painting so let me mark it for you there's the vanishing point obviously it's easier to find the vanishing point if you have straight lines in an image or a photograph but remember when you start drawing something like this definitely you need to use perspective to be able to draw something complicated like a building or a vehicle or even something simple as a box and I would like to show you a two-point perspective example as well so let me go back to bridge and I'm going to select this photograph and I'm going to extend the canvas with the crop tool so I select the whole image and I alt click on one of the side points of the crop tool to extend it in both directions like this and I'm using the same tool again the custom shape tool which we created and I just create one uh, shape layer okay so first of all we need to find uh, one of the vanishing points because here I can tell first just turn it off I can tell that there are two vanishing points to, so this is a two-point perspective the lines of the bridge are going to the left and they are going to meet somewhere here on the left while these lines are going to meet somewhere on the right okay so this is definitely a two-point perspective but the vanishing points are going to be quite far uh, outside the edges of the original photograph and as you can see I have one of the vanishing points here on the left and I'm going to try to align the lines to the bridge so I'm concentrating here on the bottom this this part and also here on the top so I'm going to move it even more to the left and probably I have to change the horizon as well 
and I think I'm getting close to it now. This is quite close to it. Maybe I need an even bigger vanishing point just to have uh, the lines long enough to be able to capture the original perspective. You can see this line here follows those buildings. These lines are close to the bridge. It's not completely accurate, but it's somewhere there. And I'm going to Alt click and then also hold down Shift to move another vanishing point on the right side. And while I'm doing this, I turn off the one on the left because I would like to find uh, the other vanishing point. And this one is, I can see it's a bit closer to the image, to the edges of the image than the other one. So I'm moving it closer. Yeah, it's something like this. So I check here on the top, this line, then these lines are parallel to these lines and also on the bridge. It's quite accurate. Again, I don't want to spend too much time on it. But you can see that's my second vanishing point. And if I turn on both of them, you can see that we found the two vanishing points, one here on the left and one here on the right.